All right, so I've been gone for a while, PAX West, hanging out with, you know, my boys and whatever, but we are back with some more Pokemon Sun and Moon information. This is sort of like a news slash browser video slash I don't have time to edit video. So anyway, wait a minute, is this Professor Oak's Alola form? Are you kidding me right now? I thought people were just like joking about that, but they actually referenced that on the Pokemon website. Okay, well... We don't have too many new Pokemon to discuss here, just the ones here at the top. I mean, I didn't get to discuss Rattata and uh, Raticate earlier because of PAX West and whatnot. So, look at all the Pokemon that we have here already. Honestly, look at all these Pokemon. We pretty much have the whole Alola decks available to us. No, but really, we have a lot of Pokemon that, um, that we've seen already from the Alola region. It's crazy. I feel like this is the most that we've seen before any generation I mean excluding X and Y you know they leaked that whole thing but other than that I mean I feel like this is the biggest uh, amount of official um, announcements that we've received and there's more coming September 14th so you know stay tuned for that anyway so the Alolan Rattata here they changed because Young Goose was messing with their territory and um, because they live in a more urban area now they eat more or you know it's higher in calories or whatever so they they changed up a little bit actually no it's Raticate that gets fatter and not Rattata but Rattata changes because of you know I, I think it's like everything combined that makes it change into this darker Rattata with the mustache looking thing it's like sort of like a mafia thing too because it says that Alolan Raticate serve as their bosses can I say mafia can I even say mafia anymore I don't even know YouTube's new rules or whatever I'm kind of scared to even speak my mind at this point but um anyway um you know the exploding Rattata population in the Alola region you know the people of Alola were like you know what this is not Kanto we're gonna release some young goose into the wild get these Rattata killed so that's pretty much what happened am I talking about war here because I don't think I can talk But anyway, pretty much their new environment changed their form. Um, and apparently they have an excellent capacity for sniffing out delicious fresh foods in Alola. They do not care. If your food is not fresh, they don't care. They want fresh food. They want the freshest food that Alola can provide. Now, Alolan Raticate is pretty much the same. Now, this one, um, it shows that, you know, Raticate became a lot heftier because their, um, their diet is higher in calories. So, um, you know, Raticate does not look thin. He got on that, um, I don't know. He, he got some good food, though, because he says that, or it says that they only eat fresh fruits and high-class ingredients. So, um, you know, pretty much like Rattata, the same exact thing. Now, these guys are the bosses of uh, Rattata, and um, they pretty much grab a lot of food in their nests. They, uh, I guess, like, uh, I don't know if they hibernate or not. I don't think that's, it says anything like that. They just like to have a whole bunch of food available but yeah the Rattata go out and gather the food they keep the food and uh, the Raticate stay in their nest that's crazy so once you became become a Raticate you no longer have to go out and find food you can just chill at the nest and eat all the food but anyway uh Raticate is also a totem Pokemon that um the trial apparently takes place in Verdant Cavern on Melamele Island so I think Melamele Island is the first island where you start your adventure and that's apparently where Alolan Raticate is a totem Pokemon. So it's not going to be only Alolan Pokemon that um, are totem Pokemon. They're also going to make use of um, Alolan Kanto Pokemon, I guess you could say. But, you know, in, in a way, Alolan Kanto Pokemon are Alolan Pokemon. You know, they're like natives. So, because um, they grew up there. They grew up there for a really long time. So... They're pretty much, you know, people that grew up in Alola, they see it as their own. Because they're different from the Pokemon in Kanto. So, it's not like, I don't know. It's, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. But anyway, uh, Jang Mo O, which is a dragon Pokemon. This is going to be one of the fierce dragons. I feel like this is going to be one of the fierce dragons, sort of like, uh, you know, uh, Haxorus. Um, you know, Dragonite's pretty fierce. Something like that, like Salamence. Something like that, exactly. Salamence, that's exactly what I was looking for. Anyway, Jeng Mo Wo has the pride of a warrior. It remains humble about its capabilities, but it wants to become stronger, so it never neglects its training. It uses the skill on its head for both offense and defense, and it never turns its back against its enemies. So this guy, from the very beginning, early stages, wants to become really strong. So what does that tell you? 
he's definitely gonna evolve and he's definitely gonna get stronger because that's how it works you know um Bagon wanted to fly and that didn't seem possible but look at him he became a Salamence and started to fly Jang Mo O's goal is just to become stronger so imagine that his goal is just to become stronger so he's gonna become crazy strong I feel like I feel like his evolution is gonna be insane hopefully he keeps the dragon typing instead of you know being like dragon slash um because if he turns dragon electric like his design kind of hints at it would not be good because earthquake is a very common move in the metagame and even I, I guess like not really in the normal game since earthquake isn't like you know it doesn't show up until later on if it even shows up but um I wouldn't like that for Jang Moo. I wouldn't like him to become Dragon Electric. It would be a really cool design, but I'm not sure what that would um what that would say for its stats or its uh, durability in the metagame. Nothing really prepared me for this one though. Type Null, the synthetic Pokemon, normal type, and um, well, all that stuff doesn't really matter. I didn't even you know I didn't even talk about the category or the type or the ability for all the other Pokemon, which I should have, but I guess I didn't. Anyway, Type Null, there's so much to talk about here. Like, before I even get into the description, I wanted to just talk about Type Null in general. So Type Null, in the back, you see this fin, you know, that represents the water typing. The front is like, like these uh, bug type, um, you know, legs. So that represents the bug type. Um, the helmet has traces of green. I'm not sure if that's moss or if that's just green, but I would say that that would represent the grass type. And, um... You know, the wooden sort of helmet, it doesn't look wooden actually, it looks like steel. But the thing above it looks more like steel, so that would represent steel. There's some steel in there, I can see it. Now, the um, maybe it's made out of rock, not wood. It looks more like rock, sort of like a brick maybe. I'm not sure, but that would represent the rock type, I guess. The rock and ground type. And then we got like some poison and dark over in its back legs. Um, you know, I don't, I really don't know, and I guess, like, it's eyes, you know, in the back there, maybe ghost, because, you know, most ghost Pokemon, or a lot of ghost Pokemon have, like, you know, this darkness inside, and you can just see their little eyes. But then again, the helmet is apparently designed to control its powers, sort of like Mewtwo in the first movie, if you think about it that way. I'm guessing Type Null is really strong in order for them to have to put a helmet like that. And actually, that helmet kind of resembles Arceus, like the uh, the ring around its waist, it kind of resembles that. I wish I could turn it around, but this Pokemon is really mysterious because of the fact that it's a synthetic Pokemon, and it was made um, using the strengths of various Pokemon, and it can adapt to any situation. Not to mention that one of the, um, one of the key characters in the game has this Pokemon as like their main Pokemon. And I think that might tie into the bottom of the description that says, to complete a certain mission, there was need of a Pokemon powerful enough to rival those Pokemon often spoken of in mythology. So it could be Lunala and Solgaleo. Like, I mean, if Type Null is stronger than them or enough to defeat both of them, they said rival those Pokemon. Those Pokemon, not a Pokemon, those. So Type Null was made to battle Solgaleo and Lunala, I'm guessing, which is crazy because that means Type Null is stronger than them, which means that Type Null could be the third legendary that was spoken of. I mean, we don't know that. We really don't. But this Pokemon sounds really strong and it's a big part of the game, I feel like. I mean, it was in the trailer. It was owned by a key character. So we're going to see Type Null um, a lot. And I feel like this is not its final form. So now let's move on to Oak. Samson Oak. There's not really much about him, just the fact that he's Oak's cousin, which I find really weird because it's like Professor Oak in the Kanto region and uh, in the Johto region. That's where he appeared. And Professor Oak disappeared after that. Um, actually, no. In, uh, in Sinnoh, I believe he came back um, during that. But after that, I don't think we've seen him until now, again. But then again, it's not him. But will he show up? Like, there are so many questions to be answered because Professor Oak could definitely come back. I mean... He's here on the Pokemon Sun and Moon website right now. His artwork is right here. His cousin is right there. If something big goes down that his cousin is involved with it, Professor Oak might come in because Professor Oak is more popular than his cousin. I mean, we haven't heard about his cousin until now, so you can only just, you know, you can assume that. What? I didn't even know about this. Some of the Pokemon that appear in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon are different. What's more, there's a difference in the way time is set in the two games. Except for a few scenes, time in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon is tied to the actual time. 
Pokemon Sun operates on the same time as your Nintendo 3DS, but time in the world of Pokemon Moon is shifted by 12 hours. What? It looks really nice, by the way, like the starry um, night sky and, you know, the moon right there. Perfect. I think they did a really good job with that. I feel like they've upgraded from X and Y, but Pokemon Moon shifted by 12 hours? I don't know. I feel like... I feel like there's something, I don't know what I have, but I like everything to be in order. So I'm probably never going to play Pokemon Moon because Pokemon Moon is like off by 12 hours. I'm going to feel really, really weird. But then again, when you're playing Pokemon Moon, you always want it to be nighttime. In Pokemon Sun, it will always be daytime, except, you know, when you're playing Pokemon Moon at night. But most people play in the day. So actually, you know what? That's actually pretty cool. I'm not even going to lie. That's actually pretty cool. The Ether Foundation. So the Ether Foundation works in the Alola region, and apparently their goal is to take care of Pokemon that have been hurt. Um, other than that, I don't really know anything about it. All I see is this Lusamine. I'm about to lose my channel. The Ether Foundation has constructed an artificial island called Ether Paradise. There, they not only provide shelter for Pokemon, but also conduct various research projects. It seems that the main character will also be able to visit Ether Paradise during the adventure. And first we have Lusamine. Is that even how you say your name? Lusamine? Lusamine? I don't even care. The lovely Lusamine functions as the Ether Foundation's president. So, you know, this girl, she's like all the way at the top. She's a president, she's made it, and she's... Okay, so Faba, the Ether Foundation branch chief sports green sunglasses. This is like the branch chief, I guess. And he wears these kind of like giant... Uh, I don't even know what you would call those. Like, he looks like a... He looks like he would be a Mega Man boss or something. Like, he doesn't look like a Pokemon character at all in this outfit. Like, what is going on? So, they're his signature accessory, I guess. Like, you know, it being his signature accessory, it's obviously going to be unique, looking different. So, I guess I understand. Man, he seems very proud of his position as Branch Chief. Now, I don't know about you, but he doesn't really look that nice. He does not look like a guy who would just be like, oh, yeah, let me take care of Pokemon. Let me just, um... You know, house them in the ether paradise. Yay. You know, he doesn't look like that type of person. Now, Wick? Wick? She looks like the type of person to care. You know, she looks like she would take care of someone. Or of a Pokemon. And Lusamine, she also looks like she could take care of a Pokemon. You know? And um, the employees of the Ether Foundation, they look like pretty nice people as well. But, you know, Faba over here on the other hand looks uh you know it's the artwork is supposed to define like the character and faba in my opinion does not look like a nice person at all maybe the ether foundation is like a you know honest corporation honest business but um i don't know actually is this like what is is this a business like non-profit what what is it? i don't even know but their goal is to care for pokemon so i don't think they make any money but the, you know, the outfits that they're sporting, it looks like they're making some money here. So I don't know. I'm going into theory mode right now, but I really don't know what else to do. You know, this is just so confusing. Maybe Faba is like, uh, he's going to like go rogue or whatever and go against everybody or something like. This is obviously going to have a very big, um, a very big role in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. They almost seem like they would be a second team almost. But at the same time, I'm not exactly sure. And then, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't cut to this because I wanted to transition right into this. The Alolan Regions Ultra Beast. Now, um, you know, take a look at this. OB01, right? I just wanted to show you that. I'm not going to talk about it right now. I'm going to talk about it in a second. And now we go to the list of Pokemon. Do you guys see OB, UB01 here at all? Like, at all? No, it's not under the Pokemon. It's under its own little section. It's not even a section um, for the Ultra Beast. Now, it's confirmed that they're saying right here, in the Alola region, rumors are flying about mysterious creatures known as Ultra Beasts. So they gave it a name already, but this is fairly new. Apparently, this is happening right now. And it appears that the Ether Foundation is also conducting research on the Ultra Beast. So now we have a direct link to the Ultra Beast and the Ether Foundation who apparently only take care of Pokemon. But apparently they're also conducting research on Ultra Beast, conducting research on some aliens and taking care of Pokemon. Two completely different things. Like, what is your foundation? Like, what is this? What is your corporation about? Here on the websites it says, according to rumor, multiple Ultra Beasts exist. 
Now, since this is on the Pokemon website, that's no longer a rumor. You know, they wouldn't say that if multiple Ultra Beasts did not exist. And um, they have a code name. This is the first one that we've ever gotten, UB01. UB01's body is composed of a glass-like substance. However, it's constantly changing shapes, never settling on one. While evidence of something like a survival instinct can be observed in UB01, no one knows whether it has a will of its own or any emotions. It's said that for some reason, its movements resemble those of a young girl. Okay, well, um, you know, while we see UB01, you've probably seen this a million times. I, I have a feeling that, you know, people have made videos about this over and over and over. But regardless, I wanted to, you know, tell you guys how I feel about all this. Um, where do you even find this? She's not even here. You guys know Lily, right? That's what I'm trying to look for. There we go, Lily. I wish I would have had the other thing open on another page, but you guys can see, right? The uh, the little uh, fish tails or whatever she has going on and the big hat. It looks like her. It looks like UB01 looks like her, okay? Not to mention, she also looks like Lusamine or Lusamine. I like Lusamine better. You know, Lusamine sounds a little weird. Lusamine sounds a lot better than that, but looks exactly like UB01. Okay, but you know, UB01 also kind of looks like, because uh, you, you guys see this sort of like a dress thing that could be Lusamine's hair. Okay, I'm going into speculation mode right now, full on speculation mode right now. But honestly, look at Lusamine. You guys at home, right? Take a picture of Lusamine, Lily, and UB01 and put them next to each other. And you guys cannot tell me that you don't see a resemblance, especially between Lil Lily and Lusamine. There is a clear, clear link there. There is something going on here because there's another character that I cannot find. Where is he? He is like the, um, oh yeah, this is for later. Um... Really weird, he doesn't show up on any of this. Maybe he shows up on the uh, video that I'll have in the link, hopefully, if I don't forget. But let me uh, let me go through this. He definitely shows up in this. If you guys haven't seen this trailer, go to the um, Pokemon YouTube channel and you'll find it there. Oh, there's also like Pokemon Snap in the game. I forgot to tell you guys about that. Oh my God. There's like Pokemon Snap in the game. Like you can, it's so weird, but um, you know, here they show UB01. They don't show it in a battle or anything. So, like I said, it might not be a Pokemon. It's probably not a Pokemon. It's just, uh... But, yeah, here we go. Team Schools Enforcer. Wait a minute. What? Wait, 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 wait. So, he probably... He probably is here under Team School. Yo. Yo! He was right. Wait, no, he wasn't. Okay, I had to open this up. Gladian. This young man lends his strengths to Team School as an Enforcer. So, he's kind of like Alon with... Team Flare. He places a high value on being strong in Pokemon battles. His partner Pokemon is the mysterious type Null. What? Gladian is part of Team... S I did not know that. I did not know that because Gladian, Lusamine, and Lily, I swear to God they have a connection. I swear. I swear it. I'm not even kidding anymore. Oh my God. I am so strong for that feeling that I don't even know how to express it anymore. Gladian, Lusamine, and Lily must have some type of connection, and all three of them are aliens. UB01, UB02, and UB03. I'm telling you guys right now. I'm not even, I don't even know what, you know what? I'm just going to leave it at that. One thing that's really interesting, though, is how is Gladian not part of um, the Ether Foundation and instead Team Skull? Like, is it a brother that went rogue, or what is going on? I don't even know what's going on, to be honest with you. But um, there's one more thing. Oh, yeah, okay. So the, uh, you know, there, I feel like there are a couple things I missed, but uh, the final thing I'm going to talk about is a pair of trainers investigating Zygarde, Dexio and Cena. Right off the bat, you know, I played X and Y a few times. I know who Dexio and Cena are. They're from X and Y, and they were um, Professor Sycamore's, you know, apprentices or little kids or, you know, not his kids, but they were like two little kids that worked with Sycamore. But in this game, they're grown up. They look pretty grown up to me. And, um... They give you an item called the Zygarde Cube, and with that, you collect the Zygarde cores and the Zygarde cells during your adventure in the Alola region. So this is probably pretty early on. Um, now, the cores and cells can be found all over Alola, which is really weird because Zygarde is supposed to be a Pokemon from the Kalos region that watches over Kalos' ecosystem. But maybe something is going on in Alola, and maybe Kalos isn't too far away since we see Dexio and Cena. 
the first two characters from Kalos that have made an appearance in Sun and Moon so far. And, um, you know, like, maybe something happened here. Because why are they even here? They're, they seem to be on vacation, by the way Dexio is dressed. But we don't know for sure. But yeah, in that second box, they're pretty much just repeating themselves. So, you go throughout Alola and you collect Zygarde cubes and, or sorry, Zygarde cores and Zygarde cells. You might be able to use Zygarde core in battle. And then, you know, as, uh, as you collect more and more, you can use Zygarde 10, Zygarde 50, and uh, eventually complete Zygarde once you collect all the Zygarde cores and Zygarde cells which uh, I'm pretty sure you can't do until you beat the game anyway so it's not like a broken thing you're not going to be able to get Zygarde until probably like the end of the game and then after that you're going to have to collect over half of the remaining Zygarde cores and Zygarde cells in Alola and they probably won't appear until after you beat whoever you beat at the end I don't even know how that's going to work so so many mysteries and um, not that much time left, honestly. There's not that much time left for uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon to come out. Just uh, a little over two months. And um, we're almost there, boys. We're almost there. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to click like, subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.